Hello everyone, uh, if you've seen my previous video, Fischer finally got his first win against Mikhail Tal in the Super Tournament in Bled in 1961. And uh, although Fischer didn't win this tournament, uh, Mikhail Tal was, uh, I think, one point ahead of him, so Tal won this tournament. Uh, Fischer was already planning uh, on his great match with Botvinnik, and uh, he was already thinking about uh, where the match should take place. Uh, little did he know that uh, his match for the world championship was uh, 10 years ahead of this moment and it was won't be against Botwinik, it will be against Boris Paski and Reykjavik. Uh, but uh, this is a game played one year after this encounter and uh, this was played in 1962 in Stockholm. And Mikhail Tal wasn't playing this tournament so this was a, a great opportunity for Bobby Fischer to finally win a very strong tournament. Uh, but although Tal wasn't playing here there were a very... Uh, uh, a couple of very strong Soviet grandmasters here, like uh, Efim Geller, uh, Tigran Petrosian, and uh, the young Russian superstar Viktor Korchnoi. And, uh, the, well, the greatest round of this tournament was definitely uh, Fischer versus Petrosian, where Fischer was a pawn up, but uh, Petrosian managed to draw the game. Uh, but the next best thing uh, here would be definitely the game uh, Fischer against Viktor Korchnoi. So that's the game I'm about to show you. Uh, Bobby Fischer is white and Viktor Korchno is black. And yeah, I have to mention that uh, Bobby is still into collecting suits and uh, he bought four new suits and one new very elegant suit for this uh, occasion and a pair of new shoes. So, he's not only interested in winning the tournament, he's also interested to be the most elegant grandmaster there. Uh, so Bobby goes e4, e5, knight f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, a6, the standard Rui Lopez, Morphe defense, bishop to a4, knight to f6, Fischer castles, bishop to e7, rook to e1, b5, bishop to b3, Korchnoi castles, c3, d6, d4, bishop to g4, bishop to e3, e takes d4, c takes d4, knight f5. Uh, Fischer retrieves the bishop, bishop to c2, knight to c4, bishop to c1, and now c5, that's the whole point of knight uh, moving from c6 to get this queenside expansion. Uh, even though this knight wasn't, uh, is not, is, isn't going to be on c4 for a very long time. So Fischer kicks him out, b3, knight to a5, uh, d5, knight to e7, knight to d2, bishop to f6, rook to b1, getting the rook out of the way, c4, uh, h3, captures, captures, and now c takes on b3, a takes on b3, queen to c7, bishop to e3, and now bishop to c3, uh, rook to e2, and now b4. And uh, here it seems like uh, Korchnoi may have accomplished something on the queen side, locking the position like this. Uh, but you'll see in a couple of very subtle moves how Fischer handles the position. Uh, Fischer plays knight to d4. And uh, of course this knight is very dangerous here, as black's knight is on a5, not really doing anything. Uh, if he ever moves to b7, Fischer has this nice c6 square and uh, you definitely don't want to capture the knight with the bishop because, well, you don't want to give Fischer a bishop pair. So Korchner goes rook f to e8, knight to f5, knight to b7, uh, bishop to d4, and uh, again, capturing on d4 and queen takes d4 would be uh, very annoying for black here as it's signed the g7 pawn. So Korchner goes g6, allowing this knight to h6 check, king to f8, and now rook to c1. And here again you'll see in a couple of very subtle moves how Fischer uh, gets from this position to a, a very dominant position. So rook to c1, eyeing this queen on c7, and uh, Korchner doubles up, rook to c8, and here Fischer plays a bishop to d3, attacking this a6 pawn. But this also uh, makes room for this other rook on e2 to go to c2. So Korchner defends the pawn, queen to a5, and now rook to c2. And now Fischer is the master of this c file. Uh, Korchner plays uh, knight to e5, bishop to f1, and now knight to c5. And this knight to c5 move, uh, as you can see, uh, Korchner doesn't really have a, a good move to play here. Uh, this bishop cannot move because the rook is pinned. Uh, the queen cannot move as it, uh, it has to guard the a6 pawn from the bishop on f1. Uh, he, you can't capture because, again, uh, this rook is pinned. Uh, the, this knight has nowhere to go. 
So the only thing uh, Korshner could come up with is to give up a pawn to maybe get some activity. So he plays knight to c5. And uh, Fischer happily takes the pawn. Bishop takes on c3, b takes on c3, and rook takes on c3. And here Fischer is up a pawn. King to g7, attacking the knight. Knight to g4. Knight captures on g4, queen captures on g4, and now rook to b8. Uh, Fischer plays rook to f3. Knight e4. Uh, queen to f4, attacking that f7 pawn. Korshner goes f5. Rook to e3. Rook to e5. And here, rook to c6. This is a this is a very dangerous move as it is threatening rook takes on d6 because after the rook takes, then this rook is undefended. Uh, and uh, Korshner plays rook to e8, uh, which is uh, which is an essential move uh, because if Korshner plays something like uh, I don't know rook to d8 or something, then uh, this b4 move is very unpleasant for Black. Uh, the queen cannot stand this diagonal, so the queen, well, there's no other move really but to capture the pawn, and then rook to c7 check is coming, and after a king to any move, like, okay, not f8, but maybe king to g8, then queen to h6, and, well, checkmate is unstoppable. So, here, Korshner plays rook to e8, so now, uh, rook to c7 check isn't really that dangerous as the rook can cover up. Uh, so Fischer captures rook to d6, his original threat, uh, queen to a1, uh, rook captures on a6, queen to d4, rook to d3, attacking the queen, queen b2, d6, uh, g5, queen to e3, f4, and now queen to a7 check, and, uh, well, here, Korshnoi resigns. Uh, after a move like maybe king to g8, then d7 is coming, and uh, well, this is deadly. You have to block the pawn somehow, maybe rook to d8, and then queen to c7 with a double attack on both rooks. This is, uh, well, crushing for white. And uh, Fischer did win this game, and he easily won the tournament. Uh, two whole rounds before the tournament ended, Fischer had first place. It didn't really matter if he lost the last two rounds. So this is uh, Bobby's first win in a really big international event. And although Michal Tal wasn't playing there, it was still a pretty big, pretty big victory. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. That's I think this is the first encounter between Fischer and young Viktor Korchnoi, uh, who will, in 1974, be playing the candidates uh, to challenge uh, Fischer for the World Championship, although he will lose to Karpov. But okay, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you're interested, uh, here are my two previous videos, you can check those out, and uh, yeah, see you soon.